a brilliant summer's day in July 2018, and a ship waits to be born. But not just any ship. This is Royal Research Ship Sir David Attenborough, new flagship of the British Antarctic Survey. For all who've lived and breathed this project through five full years, today is a dream realized. A dream of new horizons in polar research. This really is state-of-the-art ship and it's got a lot of new uh, scientific equipment on it. So for example, one of the things on this sh ship, which we actually could probably could see in the hull, it has a hole through the middle of the ship, believe it or not, called a moon pool. This allows us to go even further into remote areas, which are ice covered, and then still do our work using the moon pool. As always with a ship build, getting from a set of drawings to a living vessel is immensely complex, with no room for error at any stage. To me, the main thing about this has been the sequencing and making sure everything has been in when it's supposed to have been in. And then there's noise. For the sake of the science she will do, RRS Sir David Attenborough has to be as quiet as she can be. On the main decks we have uh, floating floors which deaden the, the noise from the machinery spaces below. So the, lab, the labs are on three deck and above so these are 100 millimetre thick insulated decks. Our concern about the health of our planet is essential because our planet's in such danger. And the key to discovering how to help that and understanding what the problems are, are not just up here in the Northern Hemisphere and on the temperate regions. It's at the poles, both north and south and so that our future and everybody's future will be affected by what people working on this ship, British scientists and others, will be discovering in years to come. Three, two, one, launch. After her move to the fitting out basin, on goes the superstructure of the ship, a seamless lift and shift. RRS Sir David Attenborough is the most advanced research vessel ever built in the UK, replacing not one, but two ships in the British Antarctic Survey fleet. Previously we had a logistics vessel and a science vessel. That's now all in one and uh, it has been challenging to, to basically get, from a regulatory standpoint, a research vessel, a special purpose vessel, a general cargo vessel, a tanker, um, and an explosives carrier all into one ship. Fascinating as she is to anyone interested in ships, Sir David Attenborough is all about science, a floating powerhouse of research. And for the scientists accustomed to weeks of sea time, with the British Antarctic Survey, she's also about new opportunity and scope. 
With this ship, we may be making a, even longer trips at sea because it has an endurance of up to 60 days. So, uh, and, and this, is, this adds more, further flexibility because it means we can go to places further afield to, uh, and still do a substantial amount of work. We have a number of new acoustic instruments on the bottom of the ship that, that can look at how animals are organised in the water using sound. We're going to be able to go in and we're going to be able to look at those interactions in a really fine scale detail. And though the new ship sports the name of one of Britain's most admired naturalists and broadcasters, the tongue-in-cheek vote for her to be called Boaty McBoatface is not ignored. This is the real Boaty McBoatface, an underwater drone to be deployed by the ship that will carry out a multitude of scientific tasks in the deep ocean. But the last and characteristically modest word must be with its extraordinary ship's true namesake. What's it like to have a ship named after you? Humbling, humbling, um, and of course it'll acquire its own identity, which is much greater than mine, and perhaps longer than me. Uh, the way that one uses the names of ships, and they become entities quite independent of the names they carry. And finally, Sir David, will you be going to sea in her? I would like to think I would. Uh, whether I get to the Antarctic yet again, I don't know. It's a long time since I was there, um, and, but to travel on that ship would be a privilege.